Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Masu Pro Wrestling. I'm your host and sole commentator, Masu Pro Wrestling. Tune in tonight. We have some crazy action ready for you. It is going to start off with Rocky coming off of their loss at Not a Christmas Show. Did not pick up the Icon Division, the Idol Division Championship, excuse me, but had the first ever elimination in an elimination chamber and, you know, bright side, still terrifying. So Rocky is going to be in one-on-one -on -one competition here tonight as we are in no man's land as usual. You know what it's like after a big event, you're all trying to impress the guys upstairs to see who will be the next champion. Who will be the next number one contender. Rocky is slowly lumbering their way to the ring trying to take that title as queen of darkness in mpw glitchy currently holding that and the idol division championship that glitchy won on saturday Rocky put some devastation in that match, but was an early elimination and started off the match as well. So it was unfortunate for the newest idol in the division, but I mean, those championship opportunities, you know, you may come across some more in your future. So we'll have to see how Rocky handles this uh, upset, this, uh, this speed bump in her career. Who will be her opponent tonight? It is Rocky versus the former MPW Openweight Champion. It feels so weird to say that. Former longest reigning MPW Champion, MPW Openweight Champion, Tyranno Maximum. It will be strange to see Ty walk out without the Openweight Championship around their waist, but alas, that's how the cookie crumbles in this business. They were also, I believe, the, in the final three of the Elimination Chamber, nearly getting the Idol Division Championship. And now looking to get back into the running of things. Tyranno Maximum, an incredibly dangerous opponent. This will not be Falls Count Anywhere, so maybe a little bit out of their element, but it will be a regular singles match. Doesn't mean we won't see some spots on the floor, probably. Tyranno Maximum. Before Rocky, Ty was the newest member of the Idol Division champion, or the Idol Division, so. You know, Ty knows what it is to be new. And as we uh, come back into Thursday nights again, off of our big event, we will be coming back to the norms. We will be continuing the double eliminator random selection tournament for the uh, for the shot at the championships. That will end up soon. That will actually end right before the next big event. So they may get their shots at the title in their next big event, potentially. So that will be pretty insane we'll see that we will have a match next for the in that tournament but right now we're focusing on the idols here ty tries to run off the ropes but rocky immediately grabs him holy crap look at the toes as the pin the ref was so flabbergasted that she didn't even know what to do there double hook german rocky's gonna take this immediately i think rocky has been nothing but pissed off after that Elimination Chamber match using the magical purple ropes. Goozles tie early on. Choke slam. Sit down choke slam by Rocky. Ty's not going to go down easy. Ty's been goozled before. DDT plants 180 to Rocky off the noop. Ty looking like they keep going to go off the ropes, but not quite. Just chops the head. Rocky doing the jump and just the disrespect. Just wiping the dirt into Ty's face with that one. Deadlift. Powerbomb. 
Oh my god, flips through in a knee strike. Devastating offense. Knee strikes into a backspring knee strike. Rocky is showing off at this point, but Ty is uh Ty tries to knock her off the top rope there. She's still up double axe handle off the top. Looking like Rocky is wanting to just fight this one out. Super Falcon Arrow. Knee strike. Rocky felt that superplex Falcon Arrow from Schmeep's World. Drops the leg on Saturday. She felt that Falcon Arrow Saturday off the ropes. Cross body just flattens Ty. Kick at a one. This is a former Openweight Champion, though. Ty's not going to take it down slightly. Ty's not going to take this fight. Sitting down. Cross body again catches Ty off guard. Rocky in complete control this whole match. And again, just taking time out of her day to disrespect Ty. And now stomp the boot across the forehead. Ty reverses. Just starts throwing haymakers. Drop kick takes Rocky down. And now Ty rolls to the outside of the ring, playing cat and mouse, as they say, tricking Rocky to get back in the ring. But I don't know if that will uh, be to their benefit here as Rocky immediately catches them and leaves them to dry here. Cover. They got a two. Any win here, here fourth could go a long way to a future title shot. We do have the tag tournament going on, so if an idol wins that tag tournament, they are going to be uh, the number one contender, potentially, for the idol division championship. But it also leaves a uh, an opportunity is if an idol does not win, as we have teams like Gareth and Unchained in there, if an idol doesn't win that tournament, uh, you know, people who maybe got an impressive win, maybe won the most in the week, maybe the top rated idol, whoever the bosses upstairs might pick, could be the bumpsome, could be the uh, the number one contender. We don't know at this point. It's the uh, it's an awkward position for us to all be in. Just tossing and catching Ty. We saw that on Saturday. And is Rocky looking to fly here? The dragon looking to spread their wings. Elbow drop to the back of the knee of Ty. And now Ty is looking to go up and down with this lost and found connects. Is resting that arm. No care in the world, but Ty kips up. That's the former longest reigning open weight champion. He's not just, ooh, blocks the chop, the smack. Ducks the clothesline, goes for another smack, but misses it. Who gets it reversed. Trying to keep that momentum. Off the ropes, dumps under. German suplex, float over German suplex into the northern light, or the, the bridge pin. Kick out of two though. And Rocky, I think, is confident in her abilities right now. She smells blood in the water, and it's not just the red hair of Tyranno Maximum. But Ty, northern light suplex, there we go. That's a northern lights. But Ty is not gonna give in that easily. Power bomb just hit every single rope on the way down, bouncing her head off of them. Kick out of two. Kick to the back. Just working over the back of Rocky. Trying to slow it down. Super kick connects, but Rocky sits right back up like nothing happened. Ty's trying to go up top. Maybe looking for a blender, double axe handle. Brownser. Goozles tie again. Sit down. Choke slam with authority. In the corner. Diving splash by Ty. And now working over the knee. Ty maybe looking to put 
Rocky in a blender here. No elbow drop as Rocky tries to get back up. I think Ty might be calling for the end here. Ty with the extinction. Bomb connects, putting her in her place. Two. No, Rocky kicks out. Rocky did beat the highest ranking uh, idol, I think, at that time. Uh, Draven. And one of the strongest idols to ever live, I think, to get into the elimination chamber. So you got to think I that Rocky's not going to be put away that easily. Rocky's trying to get back up to her feet. She is dazed and confused. Rolls through the clothesline for that German suplex connecting again. Could put away Ty right here. And Rocky does. Beautifully done. Certainly probably impressing some of the bosses upstairs there. Tyranno Maximum, the former openweight champion. Champion being put away by Rocky here. An impressive showing by the newest signee for the idol division. Potential title shot in her future. You maybe gotta think so. Lichy versus Rocky could be a match. For the title could be a match to be reckoned with. We'll have to see though how the tournament goes. And speaking of the tournament, we're about to go into the double eliminator random selector tournament. Let's go see who's made it in the semifinals of the losers bracket. And it's time for the Double Eliminator Random Selector Tournament. Losers Bracket Semi... Uh, technically semi-finals for Losers Bracket, but not really. It is the team of Glitchy and Flair Zero technically support the newest Idol Division Champion Glitchy. I imagine they celebrated after that show. The do most dominant couple in MPW here to face off in the tournament, fighting all the way through loser's bracket. They beat the Black Magic Society in their last round, eliminating them, eliminating Usino and Merlin from the tournament. And if you guys have never seen a match like this before, it's a little confusing, but bear with me. Elimination, meaning you have to pin both your opponents to win the match. Weapons are legal, but there is still a 10 count, meaning you can't stay outside the ring for very long. And open weight championship rules, meaning that anyone can battle anyone, meaning that if Flair has to go up against an idol, he can. If Glitchy has to go up against an icon, she can. Anything goes in that respect. You must tag in your partner when they're holding the tag rope in your corner for them to be the legal participant in the match. And their opponents will be one of the scariest teams, I personally think. The one with the most uh, coordination, the most teamwork. It's a different breed. Mama Inu and T the Shiba, the new MPW Openweight Champion. T's got to get used to these Openweight title matches, these Openweight matches. So they beat from heaven to hell the team of Schmeeps and Gaelic Angel to get to this point. And they're looking, they have to do one, this round and then fight the loser, the semifinals in winner's bracket to make it to the finals. So this is technically the semifinals of like, eh, not, I guess I, I not, not the semifinals, I guess. I don't know, kind of though. <laughs> kind of though. Mama Inu and T definitely celebrated both picking up a win. Mama Inu was incredibly dominant in her performance on Saturday, and T picks up a new championship. It was all happiness in the Sheba family on Saturday. Can they pull that off again against one of the most dominant couples? These teams definitely have the most chemistry between any team in the, in the entire tournament. So Flair is going to start it off showing these open weight rules here. As you can see, Flair and T are open to fight each other. Flair hits the below zero right out the gate, though. Trying to get those early eliminations, but Mama Inu's going to stop it very quickly. Mama Inu beat Draven in the opening contest of Not a Christmas Show. And T beat Tyranno Maximum, the longest reigning openweight champion. 
for the Openweight Championship. With this move right here, the pedigree plants Flair and pulls him for the pin one. Glitchy, of course, breaks it up, though. The hardest part of this match is when you have an opponent with a partner there. It's so dangerous, so difficult to try and take out that first elimination is so necessary for you to win this match. We have seen people almost come back from it, but so far every every team that has gotten the first elimination has won the match because it's such an advantage. And now Flair and T just battling it out. Hurricane Rana from Flair Zero. I feel like we haven't seen Flair in a long time. T crawling to her corner and Flair moving to his. Glitchy, the I Idol Division champion versus Mama Inu. I mean, if... Mama Inu, oh, old tricks connects. If Mama Inu or T wins this tournament, they will have to face each other one-on-one -on -one to determine who will be the number one contender for the Idol Division champion. But if Flair and, and Glitchy win, Flair gets a free open weight championship considering she's already the Idol Division champion. And Flair will get a Icon Division championship just like that. So having a little bit of mixture of both is sort of an advantage. But we'll see. These could potentially be uh, Glitchy's future number one contenders, T, or, T the Shiba or Mama Inu. And Flair could potentially see himself in a match against Chain. Drops the knee. Flair and T, Mama Inu and Glitchy just trading partners but flair tags in glitchy because an important part in this kind of matchup is maintaining your stamina you want to tag in your opponent your uh, partner as much as possible so that you don't waste a lot of energy you get a lot of time at rest elbow drop off the second rope goes for a pin two count almost but mama Ina breaks it up and flair maybe who i thought flair was maybe gonna go smack mama any super kick connects but doesn't take down glitchy she stays on her feet. It rocks her for a moment. T learned that from Mama Inu. And T has been busted open. By that headbutt from Glitchy. The strength and power of Glitchy just showing it as she just walks off that clothesline. T and Mama Inu both were not in the Elimination Chamber match. So maybe they have a... They did both have a match, but maybe they, you know, feel a little bit better than what they have been feeling. Ducks the punch. You know, that Elimination Chamber wears you out. It's a crazy amount of damage those those metal bars can do to you. Mama Inu back and forth with Glitchy. Ducks the punch. Who rocks her? Puts her on Dream Street and wobbly legs for a bit. And uses that to her advantage. Ooh, busts. Glitchy open with that elbow. Spinning neck breaker. And now Mama Inu might take advantage of the ability to use weapons mama inu is gonna pull out a table we very rarely see the table actually come into effect as it's like usually meant to be but uh a lot of the times it's a hazard and something that people get dropped on and it hurts so will we see someone go through the table or not and that is to be seen Blows line in the corner to mama inu trying to get that tag to t flair allows it Off the ropes and now targeting Mama Inu, who is not the legal participant. But Flair is still going after her. Drops her in the corner. Sling blade by T the Sheba. Into the moonsault. Off the ropes. Bumps him. Running Bulldog. But you can't catch a Shiba with a bulldog. Super kick. Knocks him wobbly in the corner. And a little bit of a combo breaker for her troubles. Landing right on that 
bottom side of the table. And a below zero again for her troubles, but Flair is feeling gassed already. Flair goes for the pin, looking to put away T, but Mama Inu right there to break it up early. Flair's got to make sure he watches T's partner, Mama Inu, before he goes for those pins. Glitchy, of course, going for those steel steps, her favorite weapon, and maybe going to target Mama Inu as, uh, as Flair. I mean, that's not against the rules. I think Glitchy is attacking Mama Inu. Now Mama Inu's chasing Glitchy, could leave... T in a predicament, but it looks like Glitchy might be in trouble there on the outside. T the Sheba, Discus Big Boot connects to Flair. Mama Inu's got the steel steps. Conquering, separating and conquering, dividing and conquering. Excuse me, I was trying to think of the word. It's T. Kicks a mud hole through. Flare zero. Targeting the leg of Flare. T's going up. Glitchy out on the outside. T the Shiba going up for a twisted T connects to Flare. Could be the chance they need to potentially get the first elimination. And it is Glitchy. The Idol Division Champion is all alone between Mama Inu and T the Sheba. She is the legal participant by default. Referee starts the count at one. Glitchy following T. T the legal participant. T could potentially be the opponent for Glitchy here. And maybe Glitchy can pull off the unthinkable and maybe eliminate both of her opponents by herself. She had to eliminate many people in that elimination chamber. She's looking down Mama Inu and sends a right to her. Mama Inu's not the legal participant, but she is being pulled into the ring. Busts Mama Inu open. T's back into the ring. Glitchy now in control. Picks up T. Twisting her around onto that table. He is all alone with Glitchy Mama Inu out on the outside. But now, ooh, Glitchy is looking to make sure that Mama Inu stays down, I think. I think that's a very smart tactic here. You want to make sure that both your opponents are sort of disposed so you can target one at a time. But when you're fighting someone like Mama Inu, you got to be careful you don't get caught off guard, especially fighting in front of the French-Canadian commentator's booth. Glitchy's going under the table, or under the apron, and oh, Canada, we got a hockey stick out in play. Glitchy goozles T, but T fights out of it. Knee strike to the gut. Jumps over, leg drops onto that table, as I said. You don't really see the table actually anyone get put through it in matches, but you do see it being a landing pad for people and it's a devastating place to land on it's definitely sharp it's metal on the bottom does not feel good T with that knee strike again those educated devastating knees goozles T this time lifts her above the horns frame drop connects this time no fighting out of it is T but Mama Inu's on that apron without taking out Mama Inu first Glitchy's got no chance at pinning the open weight champion. Bear hug? Potential? T fights out of it though. T and Mama Inu are showing different sides of themselves. A little bit more of a dominant performance from both of them in the most recent showings. Hockey stick whacks across the chest of T. Ooh, straight to that bloodied, already bloodied nose. I think everyone in this match is bleeding right now. Some less than others. But she gets knocked out off the ropes. Flying knee strike connects. Mama Inu gets sent into the ring. Elbow drop. 
Can Mama Inu be the one to put Glitchy away here? Climbing up top and calling her up. Cross body dodged out of the way by Glitchy. And now Glitchy's targeting T on the outside. Like I said, trying to target the non-legal participant, but it's very dangerous when T can just put her knee right through you, and now it's two on one on the outside. Glitchy has till 10 to get back into the ring, and that's if the Shibas are going to be so willing to let her go back in very easily. If Mama Inu gets eliminated on the outside, that's fine. She has one... You have to eliminate both your opponents. Suplex onto the floor to T. The count is reset back to one as Mama Inu joins Glitchy. I mean, Glitchy could also try to get a count out elimination here on Mama Inu. Right beside the French Canadian commentator's booth in our timeskeeper corner. The neck breaker. She's got Mama Inu in the corner at a count of five. Uppercuts her. Mama Inu, though, fighting out of it. Could potentially be Glitchy's downfall. Six count. Glitchy's reeling. Seven. And Glitchy makes it in before the eight count. Mama Inu feeling herself a bit. Goozles Mama Inu. Got Mama Inu up. Frame drop connects to both the Shibas. One, two. T taking her time to get back in as Mama Inu kicks out with authority. Glitchy making it to the second rope. That distance, elbow drop. Maybe looking for something else off the top. But T, T looking to interrupt Glitchy. Potentially. T got a hit off, but is trying to reach for her, but she can't quite get her. Sidewalk slam. Glitchy. The sole survivor for her team. As an upwards battle here for the newest Idol Division champion. Goozles Mama Inu again, but this time she hasn't scouted. Atomic drop. Into another atomic drop, just busting the inner thighs of Glitchy. Goes for the pin, could put Glitchy away. No, kick at a two. You're not going to put Glitchy away with that, right? Mama Inu might be up to her old tricks again, but we'll see if Glitchy has it scouted. She doesn't, it connects. The Idol Division champion... Three, a different breed moves on, eliminating technically support. Flare Zero and and Glitchy Bastards have been eliminated from the tournament. T the Sheba and Mama Inu move on in the losers bracket. The Idol Division champion has been pinned for the first time ever by Mama Inu. I mean, for the first time as champion, rather. I should I should say. These two are a devastating team. I would be, I would watch out for anyone else left in the tournament. But uh, we will move on to our semi-main event of the evening. After that barn burner of a match, we gotta live up to it with Icon Division action. It will be Gaelic Angel making his way. And Gaelic Angel had an impressive showing in the Elimination Chamber eliminating two people and then like nearly eliminating like everyone all very close to winning the match from the number one slash two spot angel really showed everyone that he deserved that spot and that he fought for it and the most controversial in the most controversial win i think angel really proved that he was he was there and he was doing good and he was he, he deserved it. He needed to... He was supposed to be there. You know, nobody can deny Angel's prowess in that match. Nobody can deny Angel's skill. But now, Angel's back in the have-nots and the... 
in the crowd. Just another face in the crowd's got to pull out some things to get a big win here in the MPW tournament for the tag team tournament. We have two teams that are just icons and one team that's just idols. So I mean, statistically, the icon division might have a champion, uh, a number one contender, but also one of those people is the icon division champion Unchained Awesome with Gareth Unpardon. So, you know, maybe they don't get, depending if, uh, if Chain and Gareth win and Chain beats Gareth in their one-on-one -on -one match. Uh, I guess no. I guess Chain would just automatically get an open weight championship match, and Gareth would automatically get uh, an Icon Division championship match. I guess they don't have to go for that fight. But speaking of Gareth on Pardon, and speaking of championships, Gareth on Pardon does have that golden opportunity. So even if he doesn't get a shot at the Icon Division championship, he has a confirmed shot. At any point in time, Gareth does. Gareth on pardon. Still in the tournament. Lost. Was, I think, in the final three or final four of the Elimination Chamber. And Gareth and Gaelic Angel was a lot of the reasons why Gareth didn't win that match, I think, because the punishment just dealt by Angel to Gareth was absurd. So many moves hit. I think Gar I think Gareth was eliminated by Angel, if my memory serves me correctly. At least he got hit by a bunch of Fall From Graces and a ton of uh, God's Last Gifts. So Gareth's going to want to get some revenge on him here. Gareth has been so close to titles, but just never quite been able to pick up a win and take that title for himself. So it's going to be Gareth. Versus Angel here in our semi-final match. Or our semi-main uh, event, rather. Off the ropes, dropkick. Both have a very high-flying style, but very different core core movements. Needy T by Gareth. Angel is... Gareth is a lot more trained, I would say. A lot more professional when it comes to movements and stuff. Where Angel is a lot more uh, devastating, a lot more dangerous and dare devil defying targets the arm of angel gareth wants to take full control and keep that momentum going into a potential championship match he has so many championship matches potentially lined up for him it's absurd angel in the corner nobody's home Off the ropes. Just takes him down. Full 360. Going up top to the outside is Angel. But nobody's home again. Gareth expertly getting into the ring just fast enough. Again, I say Angel's a death-defying guy. He doesn't really care what happens to his body. Skywalker catches him. Two. Kick it at two. Near fall for Angel. Kick to the back of Gareth. Kip up. Off the ropes. Angel got hit with this in the Elimination Chamber. And it looks like he's going to get hit with it again. The head scissors connects. Standing shooting star press. Knees up by Angel though. And making sure that Gareth doesn't have an opportunity to breathe. EDT flips him over. Drop kick. And now working over the egg, the egg, the leg, making sure that those high calibers don't hit as hard. Flattens him. Angel enjoys it flattening his opponents recently. Jeez, just bust Gareth open. Grabs him head first. I think he might have just broken his nose. A little bit more of an aggressive side of Angel.
All the blood just dripping from Gareth's face as the God's Last Gift connects. And he holds in the pin. Gareth could be out near fall 2.9 for Gareth. And Angel's going to maybe go for that fall from Grace. Potentially going to try and get that off. Gareth in control, though. Bumps him. And now wrapping himself around him again. In that submission hole, just working over every limb of his body. It's surprising that Angel's not the first one to believe in this match, actually. Splash, but completely scouted by Gareth. It was not in a great position. Angel feeling himself, but discus forearm will remind him where he's at. He's in the ring right now with Gareth on pardon. Gareth going up top. Could we see a brown crown connects? Could potentially put away Angel here too. Kick it at two though. And Gareth is frustrated. A little bit of the dramatics from, from Gareth here. Angel back up. Off the ropes. Spinning heel kick blocked. Hurricane Rana connects. Over the top. No, thinks against it. Angel's not going to let Gareth take him anywhere with that. Oh, takes Gareth down. Starts working on that submission hold again. There was nearly a tap out in the elimination chamber, but Gareth fought out of it. Can he do it again? He does. Angel is just too slippery. Inverted DDT connects. Gareth can't quite get a grip on him. But Gareth ducks him. Starts kicking him in the back. That could really cramp up your leg, to be honest. You get hit in the back or the back of the leg too much. Gareth looking for that high caliber from across the ring, and he connects it. Speaking of the ring, Angel's ears are ringing after that, connected with the side of his head, and Gareth picks up another win. Continuing to be one of the most dominant icons in the division. Sending, uh, sending a little bit of a message to anyone that thinks he couldn't make it this far. And maybe his own partner, Unchained. We'll have to see how that dynamic works. The champion working with a potential challenger at any point. Gareth could cash in on Unchained. His, his partner for the double eliminator random selection tournament. As we move on to our main event of the night. We'll see you there. It is time for your main event of the evening. And it's going to be a little bit of a rematch. From last Saturday, Sleepy Pengu will be rematching Merlin GTB. Merlin was able to pick up a win against Sleepy on Saturday, but how will they fare now? Sleepy's been kind of going in a downward spiral. As we say all the time, he was undefeated, but now he's just kind of uh, facing the crowd. He's got to try and figure out a way potentially pick up a W here and try to bring his name back into the title contention. <clears throat> Last time we saw him uh, in a very influential match, he was fighting Unchained. He's fought Unchained multiple times for number one contenderships, but he's just never been able to pick up a win. Sleepy is just not the same as he used to be. But could he prove everyone's doubts wrong tonight? Against Merlin GTB, Gareth just pulled off an impressive win last uh, last match in the semi-main event. These two have not been talked into title, title contention in a while. We'll have to see if either of them can really pull something off. If Merlin wins this one, that's a very big opportunity for Merlin to show off, showcase his abilities to the bosses upstairs. And allow for him to potentially pick up a W, uh, a, a new championship match. 
is just because the tag team tournament hasn't wrapped up doesn't mean we can't figure out who's going to get a title shot later down the road. Merlin has uh, lost to Gareth to get into the Elimination Chamber, so didn't get a shot. His, Him and Gareth's relationship has been frayed ever since Merlin lost the Icon Division Championship and then kind of lost himself. Maybe there's some sort of resentment, uh, maybe some regret that Merlin feels towards the way he treated his, his protege, but that's thoughts that he has to put in the back of his mind because... Sleepy Pengu is here, and he can't he can't prove he doesn't want it to be a, a fluke. You know he doesn't want people to think that his victory over Sleepy Pengu was a fluke. These two are both in sort of the same camp of like they haven't really gotten too much work since their last championship matches. They haven't had a lot of opportunities. Belly to belly flips him one eighty. Dropping him on his head, Sleepy. Very impressive. His amateur backgrounds in uh, wrestling coming out there. Beat hook clothesline, though, but the raw power of Merlin coming out there as well. Gets him into that power bomb position. Sleepy's not going to take it, though. Fights out of it. Cross body blocked by Merlin. These two are dying for an opportunity at a championship. Merlin and Sleepy both lost their shot at the open weight championship both haven't uh don't have the icon division championship they want something Ever nobody wants to be a titleless nobody you know double choke bomb on the outside no rolls through it they do to have till the count of 10 spinning heel kick rolling heel kick merlin backs up as Sleepy decides, I'm not going to... Ooh, grab Sleepy's leg, says, come on, act out here. Sleepy says, all right, you want me out there? I'll come join you. I think Sleepy doesn't quite want to be... Uh, Merlin was backing up to the concrete. I don't think Sleepy wants to be over there. <laughs> Jumping high knee after what Tyranno Maximum did to him. I think Sleepy's back still feels the effects of those extinction bombs onto the concrete. Four count. Sleepy's going to make it back into the ring. He wants this win. He's not even going to wait for it to get halfway done. As Merlin's going to meet him in the inside. Gets chopped for his pleasures. Off the ropes. Snap dragon suplex with the bridge pin. Two. Kick out of two. Stomps to the back of the head. That can discombobulate you concuss you really just rattle your brain around your skull that shit sucks back breaker though a la bane crushing the back of sleepy targeting that potentially injured back of sleepy as i say that just tosses him onto it again merlin knows what might be sleepy's weak point here and he's gonna do whatever he can to target it Merlin will take any opportunity, any upper hand he can get and use it against you. And Sleepy meets him on the outside. Dropping the knee. Ooh, sends him over. Ribs to the knee and then just tossing him over. Two count. Sidewalk slam. No, backbreaker again right in front of the crowd giving the front row seats. A, uh, a show there, giving their money's worth. Throw Sleepy into the barricades. And now just dumps Sleepy over it. Big boot to the side of the head. Merlin really showing off his strength here. Maybe compensating for, uh, for the insecurities he feels with all those muscle flexings. Rose Sleepy in at a seven count. Making sure the count outs aren't how it goes. Power bomb again. This time connects with that jackknife power bomb. Merlin flexing to the crowd once more. The ladies love it, and some of the guys do too. Half and half. 
As Sleepy goes for the pin though. Merlin spending too, many too much time flexing. Not enough focusing on Sleepy and he nearly cost himself the match right there. Sleepy is looking for the go to Sleepy or the Sleepy Hole jawbreaker for your troubles though. Merlin catches him. Slips under and chops the leg. Inziguri. And now Merlin's gonna send Sleepy back to look up at the lights. Sleepy Pengu out cold. No, gets up at a two count. Merlin arguing with the ref saying, do you know how to count? Do you know how to count? He's saying one, two, three, one, two, three. Got wrench deadlift. Merlin continuing to target that back of Sleepy. Ooh, deadlift, power slam coming in again, targeting that back. Goes for the pin. His foots were close to the ropes, but kick out of two. Sleepy's not going to go down that easy. And the frustration is showing on Merlin. Like protege, like teacher, I mean, I, I guess ex-teacher, as they roll out in front of the French Canadian commentator's booth. Merlin getting extremely frustrated, the dramatics showing. And Sleepy won't stay down for the three count. Bouncing the knee. Merlin climbing up top, maybe looking for a magic missile drop kick. No, he's just gonna go for a splash. Nobody's home though. And now working over the arm. Slowing it down, brother. This is a match for Sleepy to prove that he isn't washed up. You know what I mean? So many people, I think there's so many critics online saying Sleepy's washed up. He doesn't know what he's doing anymore. He hasn't been able to pick up many good wins. This is to the critics. This is to say that I am still in it. I'm still that same Sleepy that went undefeated. I could be the next Icon Division champion. Bounces Merlin's head off the turnbuckle. And then starts just kicking him in the corner. Nowhere for Merlin to go. Using those same ropes to get himself back up, but Sleepy's not going to let him. He's going to keep him trapped in that corner. There he goes, Merlin kicking his way out of it. St diving neck breaker. Merlin with the knee strike. Ooh, misses though. Sleepy trying to shake off. All the effects of this match. Chopping Merlin just putting everything into him. And the sleepy hold locked in, but he's very close to the ropes. That might be a rope break. No, ref says it's not. Could potentially put Merlin away. And he does. Sleepy Pengu taps out Merlin and has won the match. And it, what the hell? That is the Icon Division champion. Unchained Awesome coming in and attacking Sleepy and Merlin. A, a short celebration for, un or for Sleepy Pengu as Unchained clears the ring. And that's our main event, folks. I will see you guys next week. D bye. <laughs>